<laughs> okay. Uh, totally fine. I can hear you well, and I can see what you're trying to show us. So Wonderful. I'll go ahead and get out of your way, and I'll let you take over now. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Welcome, everyone. What a great day to be here. What a great day to trade, which, of course, today is what? Today is Leap Day. You get one extra day to trade, one extra day to make money, and one extra day of life. So I'm looking forward this afternoon, actually, to go out, enjoy Central Park. I live in New York. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh. And as Jeff said, I trade gaps. I specifically trade momentum in gaps, and I do prefer to short, although, ironically, we did go long today. Uh, the market gapped up today on some economic data this morning, and we went long. But I appear on TV, I talk about the stock market, I talk about economic data that comes out in news, and of course, many things that affect the overall market moves like we're happening today. If you have questions after the presentation today, you can always email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype, or you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Probably the best place to follow me is YouTube, where I put a lot of videos. I put trading room videos on there, webinars, and I also put some interesting videos about New York. So we're into already, almost, tomorrow is officially March 1st, the third month of 2024. Hard to believe two months of the year is already gone, and it's a good time to reassess and think about where you are for the year. I'm very goal-oriented. I'm a very goal-oriented person. I set goals for myself, daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, annual goals. Sometimes it's very challenging for traders, particularly if traders are losing money, to think in their mind about making you know, 200 grand a year or whatever trading. They can't seem to quite grasp that concept if they're losing, especially if people are losing for a very long time. So think about it in bits and chunks, and I say chunking it out. How are you going to do this week? How much money do you want to make tomorrow? You know. And again, it's a good time to look at what you're doing so far this year for the first two months of the year. Think about it. Are you on track for the year? Because if you're not, you got plenty of time left in the year, 10 more months to get on track, to do something different, to do something new. So I put the stats in here. I run a live trading room where I do trades on margin. Most of my trades are actually shorts, okay? So far for the year, year to date, we're up 229,059. This is through the 26th. Now today, I actually, like I said, went long. We actually went long Amazon today. I still like Amazon higher, and I also called an options trade in Amazon. These are our stats for the year so far in options, 618, 645. So, so far this year, it's been a really strong start to the year. Why? The markets had a lot of momentum. The markets had a lot of volatility, and stocks have specifically as well. So our year-to-date totals for day trades and options, again, you could do one, you could do the other. I do both. It's totally up to you. But 847704 year-to-date. Now, I risk more money, I will tell you, in my options. And the reason I do that is because I wanted to be able to trade certain stocks like NVIDIA. Uh, we were in NVIDIA calls, actually, right now. And I believe that NVIDIA is higher. And NVIDIA is kind of expensive to trade as an option, but still way, way cheaper to trade as an option than it is to do as a day trade based on the price point. So one of the reasons people love to trade options, and, and, and that includes me, is you can take a trade and hold it overnight with a fixed risk. And we will talk a little bit about options later. So you can capture the momentum with a fixed risk and also the benefit of doing options, you can capture the overnight move in a gap. And again, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So to start out, just to set the tone here, you know, I do these webinars, I do these lectures. I'm always excited to come and talk to Jeff's people. But it's really, really important. When you're listening to all the lectures this week, when you're listening to people talk today, when you're training, when you're sitting down and deciding what to do with your cash, or even to sign up for a class like mine or somebody else's, you need to think about what you're doing. You need your brain, okay? So you need to keep your brain healthy. You need to think about what you're doing when you're trading. And again, I always say I can be perfect for 30 minutes a day, one hour a day. I focus on the morning, the morning part of my of my day involves trading between 9.30 and 10 a.m., maybe till 10.30, but usually the first 30 minutes of the day, I'm in and out and done. And so I am extremely focused within that 30 minutes of the day. Far too many people when they're trading, and again, today's a good day to talk about this because the market gapped up today, rallied, flirted with the highs, then dropped. So many people look at things, make choices based on fear or basically gamble in the market and don't really think through what they're doing. So you need your brain to trade. You need to think things through when you're trading in order to make money, in order to be successful. And this is whether or not you make 
you know, $1,000 a week or $10,000 a week, you have to think through what you're doing. So how do you make money in the market? Sounds like, oh, well, you know, everyone's trying to do this. How do you do it? It's really not that complicating when you break down the philosophy of how, how, the how is what? You determine who is in control. If you can determine who is in control of a stock or the market, you can get into position in the correct direction to profit. In other words, if the bulls are in control, you wanna be long. If the bears are in control, guess what? You wanna be short. Because the only way you're gonna make money if a stock is rallying is if you go long. And the only way you're gonna make money if a stock is falling is if you short. You're not gonna make money if you're against what's going on, okay? So you have to look at the control side of it. And this is often where frustrates people because they, I think today's a good example of this because the market whipped around today. If you were in calls, for example, today, if you were in longs, you would stay, you would stay with them. You would stay with them. You have to have 100% conviction. If you shorted, which I don't know why you would, and we didn't short today, but again, if you shorted, you would have to have a reason for doing that, which would be what? Now, the market gapped up today. I don't short gap ups. So that's, that's something we're going to talk about in a little bit. But the bottom line is, in order to make money in the market, you need to determine who is in control, and then you take a position in that, in that direction of the control. So again, who is in control? This is the one that we did today. This was Amazon. Definitely, definitely, definitely. With Amazon, the bulls are in control. So here we have, again, Amazon closed here, gapped up rally. So what is a gap? Let's just go over this very specifically because again, I trade momentum and gaps. A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So yesterday, Amazon, this is a daily chart, Amazon closed here at one price and gapped up at another price. Then it rallied and the momentum in Amazon, at least this morning, I don't know exactly what it's trading at right now, but the momentum in Amazon this morning was up, okay? So the bulls were in control. So you would have wanted to go long, which of course we did. We got in, got out. And again, this is still higher anyways. So you could be in calls in this looking to continue up. This stock is getting bought. Now it may be sloshed around here with the overall market at 12, 15 lunch period, but it's neither here nor there. The control, the control this morning, if you traded this was in the side of the bulls. This was when we did the other day. This is PANW, who's in control of this. This was the day we did it, February 21st, the bears. Stock closed here, gap down. Again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So at four o'clock Eastern time, this stock closed. Okay, this was an earnings gap actually. Then it opened the next day at a price that was lower. Okay, then it fell and it fell big, huge. Got sold off, shorted, and we shorted this. And so again, who is in control here? The bears. Okay, so the only way you would have made money there is what? Shorting. Just like today, the only way to make money in Amazon today would have been to go long. Okay, and specifically we're talking about needing your brain. You also need a focus. And as I said, my focus is gaps. So the strategy that I do is focused around gaps. So again, what is a gap? A stock gaps with the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, right? But how do you determine how to play the gap or what exactly what stocks to do? Many gaps are nothing gaps or what I call nothing burgers. There's nothing to do with them. You can't predict the direction of them. In other words, they're not getting bought. There's no one really in control or they're not getting shorted or sold off. There's no one really in control. Many, many stocks will go on any given day with the overall market. And unless you read the market correctly, pretty much for the whole entire day, it's going to be difficult for you to make money unless you have a specific stock that is going on its own, which of course, Amazon actually is going on its own to the upside and PA and W on the day that we did it was going on its own to the downside. Now, here was another one we did. Again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So at four o'clock, the stock market, the US stock market closes. Then you have something called post and pre-market training. And that's where the gap's being created. Now here, the Roku closed around 95 and change, open in the morning here around 77 and change, open, dropped, fell. Again, this was a short. Now I didn't do a put in this. I didn't do an option in this, but you could have. This actually continued down Actually, this was a, was a nice overnight if you did it, but I did the Dane trade in this. This was Roku, but this was a short. So again, who is in control here? The bears, all right? So how do I determine the control 
I have a checklist. It's a 26 point checklist. This is the meat and potatoes of my strategy. This is how I determine who is in control, whether or not I want to go long it or short it. But really the rating system helps me determine who is in control. And that's how I get high odds in my trades. And that's how I get the kind of results that I just showed you earlier for the year, because I'm not looking at everything like a 50 50 crapshoot or that I need the market for my trades. It's challenging for people to do that. Now, some people may be having a good year because the market's been in an uptrend this year, made new highs, you know, a bunch of times. Do I think that the sustained rally in the market continues for the rest of 2024? No, I do not. And when the chop happens, whenever that, whenever that occurs, whenever that is, is what's going to be problematic for people that are doing swing trades or who are, who are going with the market in the overall direction of the market. What I look to do, though, is momentum trading, which, like I said earlier, is chunking it out, where I'm getting in, getting the move, get out. Swing trading or longer term trading where you buy and hold a stock for weeks or months or years is not even the way that I'm doing the options. When I'm doing options, I'm taking a weekly option expiration where I'm taking the trade, getting the move and getting out. Like I said, we're in NVIDIA, so we buy a call, it has one week to go in a day, boom, we get in, get the move, get out, whenever that move happens to happen, okay? Now, I was talking about the live room. I call the PANW in the live room. So the trades I do in the room are trades on margin. So this is effectively day trading. Now, people that don't understand margin, you need to research it. You can open up a prop account and get 10 to 1 margin. You can open up a retail account and get 4 to 1 margin. Every trader, every professional trader trades with margin. And I use stops or what are limit order stops when I take a day trade. And again, I'm usually in and out in several minutes. But theoretically, you could hold a trade all day if you want to, if it's continuing to go. PANW was a trade that you could have actually held and had the extension here on the day on this particular day. So what happened here? What happened to make the gap? The stock had earnings. And for whatever reason, again, I'm not worried about fundamentals of it, but for whatever reason, the stock gapped down and it tanked. It absolutely kaboomed. So we shorted it. Entry was 270.10. 10. $600, uh, 600 shares was a $3,720 risk. You can risk less, okay? But this was an advanced trader risk with an exit of 261. It came all the way down. I think it, I think it got to 260 or close to that. Profit was $5,460. This isn't a day trade, and this is a trade that you would have needed a margin account to do. This is a smaller risk, or what I would say a beginner risk. You could have risked less. You could have taken 100 shares. A risk of 1240. Again, you could have made 1820. This is a good return on investment or what you would say risk to reward, where we're looking to risk one and make one. Sometimes we make a little bit more than one. Sometimes we make a little bit less. Sometimes we make double or triple. But my goal, and again, my I said I'm very goal oriented. My goal every day is to try to make one. Take the amount that I'm risking and turn it over into one. Okay. And again, if you can do that, you're going to be profitable. If you look back on the stats that I showed you at the beginning, there are trades that I take that lose, but I have more winners than losers. And the reason I use stops is to control the losers so the losers don't go out of control. So when I lose, I lose the one amount that I risk, okay? But again, getting back to what I was saying, how do I pick the gap? How do I know this particular gap is going to drop or fall or this one's going to rally? Again, I didn't really like anything to the downside today. I did look for shorts today. I was trying to find a good short today. Maybe we'll find a good short tomorrow. There's a bunch of earnings out tonight and tomorrow morning. But I really liked actually Amazon today. And that has been very strong, as I said. But how do I determine which stock I want to trade? How do I get the best pick? I rate it. I rate the gap, okay? I go through the rating system, boom, boom, boom. And I try to determine whatever stock rates 20 points or more per the 26 point rating system. Now, how do you find gaps? Well, that's easy. And actually, Jeff can help you do that at the end. You find gaps by scanning. He has a scanner. You just scan them. It's easy to find gaps. It's not easy to necessarily find what ones are going to rate good. I may go through and scan 200 things in the morning, but I only may rate five. And then I only may like one or maybe two. So on any given day, like I said, most things go with the market. And if you need the market for your trains, you're going to get chopped up. Again, today's a great example of that because the market gapped up today, flirted like it was going to hold and then dropped and broke. Okay. Now here's another example of one that we did that was a short, again, who was in control, UPS, stock closed here, gapped down, open, rallied, dropped. So we shorted this, this was a short. Stock closed up here around 158 and change, gap down here in the morning to 146 and change. 
Again, here's the rally, get the drop, boom. So this momentum in the UPS, the trade here is a short. You wouldn't have wanted to go long this, okay? And many people also want to trade gaps for gap fills. That does not work consistently. Why well, sometimes, once in a blue moon, a stock will rally against the gap or the direction of the gap, but does not work consistently to make money. But when you're trading, when you're thinking about what you're trying to figure out what you want to do, you really just got to weigh the pros and cons every time you take a trade. But you've got to put the odds in your favor. If you don't have a system to do that, then again, you're 50-50 crap shooting everything that you're doing. Because at the end of the day, you, you want to take trades, analyze them, use your brain, but you want to take trades that have high odds. There's no getting away from taking, uh, taking the risk. Again, whether you put a stop in or not, you're still taking risk when you take the trade. And when I do options, basically my risk is my stop. So I don't kill options trades in the middle of them. Actually, we were in options, uh, we were in an uh, Amazon call for the last week and the trade was down actually until it flipped around today. So I will let a trade completely play out even into the last day of expiration for it to go in my favor. I don't kill it in the middle of a trade even for options. But I don't look at every trade like a 50-50. I'm trying to take trades that have very high odds of working because again, I wanna make money. You can't get away from the risk factor, but you can, you can look at things think them through and use your brain and say, why am I doing this trade? So many times I talk to people, and again, I've had the business now for 12 years, going on 13 that I've taught people my trading method. And this is all that I do, so it's all that I teach people because I only trade gaps. So I've been teaching gaps and trading gaps for a very long time. And the fact is many people, when I ask them what their strategy is, they talk about moving averages, they talk about indicators, they talk about buying support or short and resistance, and none of those things are a strategy. You're never gonna buy any indicator and get a correct and accurate way to trade that's gonna work more than it doesn't consistently. And consistency is all that matters. Anybody, even terrible traders, even people that are in these chat rooms just taking trades from people that are strangers, Anybody can make money on any given thing on any given day just based on dumb luck some of the time. Sometimes people have really, really good dumb luck and they make a lot of money in one trade. Then they duplicate and try to do it, that same thing, over and over and over again for years and lose way more than they made in the one dumb luck trade because they thought they knew how to trade and they didn't, okay? It takes skill in order to trade. It takes knowing what to do and it definitely takes having a strategy or you're, <coughs> excuse me, or you're going to lose. Hold on, let me get a glass of water here or you're gonna lose. So the whole point is that you wanna look at trades more than the indicators, okay? More than the indicators. Because if there was one indicator, one specific thing that would tell you everything that you wanna do, no one, no one would ever lose. We'd all use that indicator. It's always interesting to me. And again, if you look at my charts, they're very, 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 very clean. So anyways, DFS, stock close to your gap down. This is another gap. Who is in control here? The bears, the bears were in control. This was an earnings gap. Again, the banks have been rallying. Now this was way back in January. Stock closed here, had the earnings, gap down here. So closed up here the night before around 109 and change, gap down here around 100 and change, rallied, and we shorted it. And again, you could have done a day trade here. You could have bought a put in it. We didn't do a put in this one, but we did do a day trade. This was a huge, huge trade. Why? Momentum. How do you make money in the market? You gotta get momentum. Again, I'm not scalping. I'm not scalping for five cents, 10 cents, 25 cents. I'm not risking three, four, five thousand dollars to make 500 bucks. And you shouldn't either. Those aren't good, again, those aren't high odds trades. They're not good trades, all right? So anyways, this one here on the particular day that we did it, we shorted it at 115. Now I did an ad, so I had doubled up my risk with this one. I really, really liked it. Push back, we add in. Then I got out at 96.80. Again, this is momentum. So in a stock and something like this at this price point, $2, $3, $4 if you can squeeze it out of it. And it was a huge trade. Now, yes, you would have had to have a margin account to do this. But to go to a retail broker, you've got to have $25,000 cash to get 4 to 1 margin, which is $100,000. And you could have taken 1,000 shares of this, actually, close to it at 100 some uh, per share. If you go to a prop place, again, you can get 10 to 1 margin. So you can take 1,000 shares with 10 grand with 10 to 1 margin at a $100, $100 stock price point. So people always say, you only need all this money. No, you don't. Everyone's trading on margin. Again, if you do not understand margin, you really have no business trading whatsoever at all, as far as I'm concerned. You must understand margin. And when you do options, which we're going to talk about a little bit, you've got to understand those too. 
because everyone's so worried about Delta and this thing and that thing with options. If you get the move, you could have a, you could have, none of those things even matter. None of those things even matter. Even the timing necessarily doesn't even matter because you could get it the last day, okay? If it goes, if it moves, if it has a big move, okay? And again, that's what we're trying to get. But anyways, here was the short, get the drop, boom, out. Again, this was DFS, this was January 18th. And I'm showing you an example here. If you took less risk here, total risk 1,075, this is a great trade, okay? You could take this trade with a $10,000 account at a prop firm. You yeah, absolutely, absolutely could, okay? This is a nice trade. Same trade, less size, could have even taken 100 shares if you wanted to. Any questions here so far from anyone? I'm just looking over at the chat. You can plop it in the room. Yes, we do. Oh, go ahead. We do. Uh, Vincent wants to know, do you recognize after hours price action when looking for grabs? That's that's the whole, who, who asked that? Uh, Vincent. Vincent, that's where the gap's happening. Now, I'm not trading it. If that's what you're asking me, no, but that's where I'm looking at it. I'm analyzing it. That's where the gap's occurring. So the answer is yes. Good question. And then uh, just another comment. Uh, Kumar said, keyword, use your brain. <laughs> that's right. So, that's exactly right. Uh, Anyway, that's it. That yeah. catches us up for the questions. And, and, if you guys have questions, let them know in the chat. Let us know in the chat, and I'll I'll pass them along. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, and again, that's why. And again, I don't want to go off on a tangent here because I know we started a little bit late today. And I, but the fact is, you you got to keep yourself healthy. You got to keep yourself healthy. Again, you want to go off and go crazy. Do it on a weekend. So you get a weekend's off when you're trading. The market's only open Monday through Friday. It's it's you have to keep your brain healthy. That means eating. I I eat breakfast every morning. And again, I live in New York, so I'm trading Eastern time zone. If you're in Europe, you'd make sure you eat lunch. You need to get seven to eight hours of sleep. Again, all of these things sound like so much common sense, but you would not believe how many people do not follow any type of structure with their everyday lives that all of these things help your brain, okay? And there's something called you know, REM sleep when you get into that very, very deep sleep and that is where your brain is regenerating and where you're getting into that deep sleep where you're resting and then you get up the next day. And sometimes for even me, and this is the benefit of being in the live room with me because I'm calling these day trades live like the PANW and I'm trying to narrow it down between one thing and two things or, or, or something we're not gonna do, I look at it and I say, no, we're not gonna do it. And I make a decision, decision within seconds. As fast as I'm talking here right now today is as fast as I trade. And the fact is that that is as fast as you can make money and as fast as the market moves. And we're trading on the one minute chart. So that's, you gotta be able to be able to do that when we're day trading. But if your brain is not sharp, then you're not going to be able to make quick decisions. And sometimes you could be up a lot of money in the train and it can all go against you if you don't make a quick decision to get out. So if your brain is sharp and you keep yourself healthy, you're going to have a lot higher odds or higher chances of doing well and making money in the market because there's far too much competition. There's far too many people out there. It's everybody that's coming to this conference all week and millions and millions of other people that are out there too and they want your money. You're never, you're not making anything. You're not knitting socks and selling them in the street corner down in Times Square and getting cash for them. You are going against another person's position when you're in a trade and you're making money. And when I make money and I make profit, I'm taking somebody else's money away. There are people right now that are short NVIDIA, 100% guaranteed. People shorted that at the highs. It was a crap trade. And I don't even care if it worked for a day, I would never have done it in a million years. We're long NVIDIA, the stock is higher. And the fact is that when I make money in that trade, I will be taking it away from from the people that are short because they're going to lose and that could happen as soon as today as soon as tomorrow you have to be on you have to gain an edge okay you have to gain an edge and that's why i focus on gaps okay gaps are very very powerful but anyways getting back to this you can trade options and you can day trade gaps so let's look at some some uh some options that we did this was in january tesla and i've been liking this i've been liking this for a while it's starting to fall today we'll see uh, strike for this one was 205. So we did the 205 puts and I sent this trade out. The newsletter goes out in an email January 17th that expired the 26th. So let's look at the Tesla chart. 205s, what day was that? The 17th. So I called this here. Oh, this is a while ago. Here, okay, 
take it over. Bump, bump, bump. So again, this was the 205s. So this was a put. The cost of the trade was 450, which wasn't crazy for, for Tesla. Again, depends what you want to risk. You could have done two contracts, risked $900, made $900. This is a good trade. Dropped quick. Again, we're doing the weeklies. Whether you do, I always do the Friday expirations. And even when I'm doing the market, I'm not doing the dailies. There are daily market expirations. But the bottom line is the way to be in Tesla to make money on this one was the drop, was a put. You could have even made more money in this if you held it all the way down to the last, last day. I don't always do that, but you could have done that there. Now, we started talking about this at the beginning as far as goals and I think it's also important to know why do you want to train? Are you doing this because you want to become wealthy? Are you doing this because you want to do this for a job? Are you doing this because you're retired and you just want some side income? Are you doing this because of inflation, which is, of course, the reason the market reacted today, because costs of things are so high, rates are so high that you want extra money coming in? Many, many people decide they want to trade the market for various reasons or different reasons. And once they get bitten by the mar market bug, they're in. I find that people are just in for life. For as long as I've had the business, I've had people following me, which, like I said, it has been for, for 12 years, going on 13. It's the American dream to become rich, successful, and financially independent. A lot of people want to make that happen, but you've got to have a plan to make that happen. No one's going to ring your doorbell and drop it in your, a bag of money in your lap overnight. And again, sometimes it takes time. You set goals for yourself. You say, okay, between now and the end of the year, between now and January 1st, 2025, I'm gonna have this much money in my trading account by trading for the rest of this year. And again, that's why I said we're two months and this is the end, it's today's February 29th, it's the end of February. Look at your trading account. Are you up for the year? Are you down for the year? Are, are you where you wanna be? Okay, it's a good time to assess really at the end of every calendar month. Okay, you don't have to do it every week. But again, at the end of the calendar month is a good time, or even quarterly, you know. But so many things out there, so many things to do, so many different strategies. And again, you're here this week learning lots and lots of different things. If what I'm saying today resonates with you, then you may want to reach out to me. But the fact is, whatever you decide to do, you really only need one strategy and one focus. That's how you simplify it down. And again, that helps ease the stress off of your brain about the risk factor because you have to risk money in order to make money in the market. So for me, my one strategy and one focus is gaps. And again, particularly shorting, although I will go long. Like I said, we went long today. But why gaps? Why are gaps my focus? Because gaps are the most powerful show of price action in a chart. Gaps have large moves. We talked about some of those here earlier. Gaps can move up or down. Some of the biggest momentum moves in a daily chart come from a gap. And again, there's, there's gaps all the time. There's gaps every day, but you can't go long every bullish gap. You can't short every bullish gap. You can't short every bearish gap, and you can't go long every bearish gap. Again, it's not that simple. I analyze them. I study them. I try to figure out which one to do and then the direction. Here was one we did the PayPal. Stock close here, gap down, open drop. So PayPal, this was back here, had earnings, closed up here, ran 63 and change, opened down here, dropped, fell. And again, we shorted it. It was a put, okay? And we also um, were doing some day trades here. But again, you can do whatever you want. You could do a day trade. You could do a put. I'm not doing swing trading, okay? If I did, my risk would be a lot less, okay? Because I wouldn't have a fixed risk in overnight swing trades. But if you wanted to do swing trades, you could do swing trades too, you know? Again, there's many things you could be you could be in right now with your overall direction of the market long, you know, overnight as swing trades. But then you're not making money every day and you're not making money every week and you're not making money every month. When you're in a if you're in a swing trade, you're waiting for something to go, you could wait until July of 2025. The whole idea of trading momentum, which is exactly what I do, is I'm an active trader. You can call me a day trader, but I do options too whatever you want to call it. I'm an active trader. I'm looking to pull money out of the market on a regular basis each and every single day. And that, again, is something that I specialize in. Swing trading is you can look at your retirement account. You can look at an account you have on the side. You're not going to be taking positions every day and getting out of them every day. And many times you will be down those positions before they go. And they're also affected by the overall market. But the key to what I follow in gaps is following, like we're talking about control. Who's in control? institutional money, that's who's in control. There is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. 
And again, that's the whole key. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people. Guess what? There's a ton of them in the market. There's a ton of them in the market. There's a lot of large professional traders in the market. Banks trade. They have trading desks. There's hedge funds in the market. Again, think things through when you're taking the trades. As fun as it is to make money, it's not fun when you lose. All right. And it's also not fun being chopped up. You could take a trade, kill it. You could go long. You could kill it. You could lose a little and then short it and kill it. I, I, I guarantee you people are doing that with the market today. And they're doing it with NVIDIA, like I just said. You need to use your brain. You say, I believe this is higher or I believe this is lower. If you don't know, you shouldn't be in the trade because trading isn't gambling. Again, it sh if you want to go gambling, just go to Atlantic City, go to Las Vegas, have a good time. Look at it as a vacation. When I get up in the morning and I trade, I get up and I rate the gap and I put the odds in my favor by saying, I'm not going to do this because it rates under 20 or I'm going to do this because it rates over 20. And then I put them in order. One, two, three, four, five. If I have a couple of picks or whatever I want to do. And I look at the overall market. Is the market with me? Is the market against me? Do I have to worry about the market today? <laughs> okay. Now, as I was saying, the point is to stay consistent because that's the only way you're going to have longevity. It's the only way you're going to have longevity year over year over year. And many people that I talk to, they want to trade, they really want to do it, but they're up and down, up and down. And then by the end of the year, they lose. The 26 point checklist gives me the consistency that I need because it helps keep me focused and it will help keep you focused too. Again, that's how I know where the money's flowing. And this, this again, this PA&W was a good example because it was a nice big short. Yes, it was a little pricey, but again, you could have bought a put in it as well. Again, puts are ways to do trades that are cheaper if you don't have a margin account. But for me, I personally like trading in the live room. I like the fast trades and the benefit of trading gaps is you can trade fast and be done quick in the morning between 9.30 and 10. And I think the whole idea of trading is to work smarter, not harder. Sitting at a desk for six and a half hours a day can really zap you, um, particularly if you're waiting for something to go. If you get the big move in the morning and get out, you don't have to worry about any economic data, reports, things that come out, the Fed, and you could just go about your business and go to your job or do something else or go take care of whatever you have to that day. But a big flow of money going a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, creates momentum, and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it isn't, it is. Trust me when I say that. Again, today is a great example of the market. NVIDIA is another great example too. The instant control on NVIDIA is to the upside. That's it. And that's why I'm not shorting the stock. Not shorting it for an hour, a day, five minutes. No. The control on the side of NVIDIA is up. Bullish. The bulls are in control. Okay. Any questions here so far? Now, I put in here a week of trains. Yes. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. We do have one coming in from um, YouTube. Uh, sorry if you covered this already. Do you subscribe to the theory that all gaps get filled? No, that doesn't work. I said that earlier. That person must have come in late. Gaps do not fill themselves consistently as a way to make money. I do not do that now. I'm taking a gap in the direction of the gap. And if you're trading gaps for gap fills, you will not consistently make money. While sometimes it may work. If you take one trade, you're going to lose in the next 10. It does not work as a consistent method to trade. And that's what happens then. People get tripped up. They take a gap. They lose because they do it just like you said. They do the fill. It doesn't work. And then they get plowed over and they lose a lot of money and then they don't want to do it. People trade gaps and they don't understand them. That's not what I'm doing. Even if it rates poorly, I'm not flipping it. Say I rate a gap, it doesn't rate 20 points or more. Say it rates 10 or 15, I'm not taking it in the opposite direction of the gap anyways because you must respect the gap. Okay. Very good, thank you. Um, what were we talking about here? Okay, so this was one week of trades. I'm just gonna quickly go through these here. Um, no trades on the one day, it was the Monday, the 29th. Nothing rated good to do. Again, if you get up in the morning and there's gaps, you still gotta rate them. There's nothing that rates good. You're not going to train. And that can happen. Okay. This was BA, January 30th. We've been, we were shorting BA a ton. Just an absolute ton. Again, this is dropping today. We didn't do this today, though. But BA fell. Again, this is momentum. This is momentum. Here's the gap. Stock close here. Gap down. Open. Rallied. Dropped. So, again, you get in, get out. Done. Boom. That's it. Could have held a little bit more. 
could have lowered your stop, but you're in and out of the morning and call it a day. We also did UPS. This was a good short too. This closed here, gap down. This was a gap on earnings. We shorted it, got in, got out, done, boom. Again, you see how these trades are quick and fast in the morning. Now we did Tesla on the 31st, we lost in this. I shorted this, got stopped. That was the end of that one. Again, I have a fixed amount and then I got stopped in it and then I lost. Again, if it resets up, you can retake it, but you gotta put the stop in. We had a huge trade in Google. Uh, Google went the other day, actually. I saw it after the close and I didn't do it yesterday. You could have shorted Google yesterday. It was beautiful, but we didn't do it. Stock close here, gap down, open dropped. Okay, Google was a nice short here on January 31st. February 1st, we did QCOM. I shorted this here. There were people in the room that got out. I didn't. I didn't react fast enough. It booped over and I got stopped in this one. I lost in the QCOM. And then we did BA. This was February 1st. This fell off a cliff. Again, the momentum was to the downside. And then we did Amazon here. Actually, this was February 2nd. We went long Amazon. I've been liking this for quite some time. Like I told you, we did it today. We went long Amazon, rallying, boom, out. Again, nice trade, good trade. Could have bought it as a call. Again, nice momentum here in this today as well. And so this was one week of trades. My average risk is about 3,000 per trade. You can risk half. You can risk, you know, one fifth of what I do. It's the whole idea where you're gonna have more winners and losers and you chunk it out as you go about trading because that's how you pull a week together and that's how you pull a whole month together. And it's about having the daily focus, which is the gap. So how do I know ahead of time where stock will go? I don't guess where the gap's gonna be. I'm not predicting the gap. I'm not in anything and then just predicting the gap itself, I see the gap after I see it, and then I rate it, and then I use the 26-point checklist. It tells me what to trade and what to look for in a trade. Again, think before you trade. It's exciting to make money, but it sucks to lose, and so many people are taking trades, and they jump in things, and they don't even think about it. People are taking trades like in stocks like NVIDIA, which no one should even remotely be trading unless they can afford to take that risk. Even those options are very, very pricey. Okay, they were before the earnings, they were after the earnings. The fact is you must think about what you're doing. If you don't think about what you're doing with your risk, why are you taking the trade? Have a set strategy you use, have a stop. Know where you're gonna get out, okay? You, you have to know where you're gonna get out, okay? If you don't even know that or how much your goal is for your money you're gonna make, again, you're just like trading on the fly you're going back to the gambling mentality. But the key to getting big trades is momentum. When I trade, I'm looking for momentum. This gives me an edge and it'll give you an edge. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. It's the only way to make money trading as far as I'm concerned because if you're making a little bit and then some trades lose, you're just gonna lose. I mean, it's just, again, it's ridiculous. We don't scalp, We're tra you, you gotta get the momentum and you gotta get that in options too. Again, these, some of these things are so pricey. It's, you have to, you have to be able to, you gotta get a move, all right? 20, 30 bucks in something like NVIDIA. I don't want a dollar, I need more. Learn how to take a position in a stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move. That's what I mean by momentum. The explosive move could be up, the explosive move could be down, but that's what you need. These enormous moves happen in one direction and happen fast, particularly in the morning. Momentum trading can be very, very profitable. So again, what creates momentum in a gap? Institutional money. Who's in control? Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction, which can happen, or a larger, bigger move in the same direction, okay? Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you denote what to do and when a change is occurring. That's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. So again, my 26-point rating system pinpoints the footprints of institutional money to tell me if someone's gonna come in and buy and continue the bullish gap up or short it and continue the bearish gap down. Again, because if you're not on the side of the control, then you're, it's impossible to make money. Okay, and again, we want momentum. If institutional money is coming in, guess what? We have volume, we have momentum. We're gonna get a big move, all right? So if, you know, you're a beginner, you never did this in your life, you don't, you don't, you're like, I don't know. I've taught beginners. I just taught someone that was brand, brand new this past weekend. I had the February class. I've taught people that have never traded their life and then I've taught people that are older than me. So 
if the fact that you have experience, while that's great for to press the buttons and, and know a platform and, and things like that, you may have bad habits if you've been training for a while. Whereas someone that's brand new as a beginner doesn't have any bad habits, but they may need practice on the platform, setting their charts up, things like that. Everybody has pluses and minuses and everyone has a different learning curve. You gotta push forward and you gotta push through it. Complaining about it or wishing you were a different place or why you wasted money on other classes or lost money training in the market over umpteen years is never gonna get you ahead. There's just no point in even thinking about those things. You can't change the past or the mistakes that you made. The best thing you could do for yourself is let that go, move forward and say, I'm gonna do something different. Again, today's leap day. Let this be a brand new start for you to think differently about the market, about your trading, and have a brand new attitude. You got the whole rest of the year. Again, it's hard to believe, but before you know it, it's gonna be Easter, it's gonna be spring, it's gonna be Memorial Day, and half the year is gonna be gone. So the time to make changes and do things differently is now. And when we think about things in our past or things that we did, very often it can bring you down. You have to be your own best friend, your own best advocate, and your own best cheerleader. Because like I said, everybody else that's in the market trading wants your cash and wants your money. So if you're talking negative to yourself, you're not doing yourself any favors, okay? You are going against yourself as far as trying to be your own best advocate. And you don't want to do that to yourself because you want to succeed. If you've been trying to do this and trying to do it for a while and wanting to be successful, then you have the drive. You have the motivation. It just may be taking you longer than you thought. But trust me, it takes everybody longer than, it, than they think. When I started training, it was in 2008, and I thought I'd be able to figure this out, and I took one class. I didn't learn how to make money in that class. I did it. So I took it upon myself then to start to trade on my own and I feel like I figured it out in six months. It took me over three years to figure out the strategy now that I've been doing uh, for this last, you know, however many years, 16 years. Things always take longer than we think, but things can happen fast once we start to make the transition. And again, it's a series of 10 steps up, 10 steps forward, one step back, five steps forward, two steps back. And seeing the profits, seeing the results, again, following me in the room is very beneficial for people. You may not be able to risk an advanced trader risk right now, but you got to build your account up so you can do it. And if you're having too many losses, it's going to be tough for you to ever pull ahead. And again, whatever works for you as far as doing options or day trades. Now, this was BABA. This was a nice one here. We did this one, 216. I called it on 27. This was another put. I haven't looked at this chart for a while, but... This was cheap, $1.80. Again, however many contracts you want to take. My goal is 100%. This booped a little bit over it. If you risked 1080 you could have made 1470 This is a good, solid train. So we did it on 2.7. 2.7 BABA was here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rallied, dropped. Gap down here the next day, boom, you're out. Or you could have been out here. You could have been out here, you could have been out here. You could have been out here if you wanted to, but it was fine. And by this point, again, we were ready through the strike there. You see, we did the 75s. So into the close on the first day, the day I called it, we were ready through the strike. And again, I'm not, I'm not holding the trade into the last day if I'm up in it. I'm more than 100%. That's ridiculous. Okay. So you get in, get out, chunk it out, chunk it, and you take another trade. Every trade that you're in, when you're in a trade, particularly an option, if you're in it every night, your money's being sucked up and used up in that trade. So let's say you're up. So you could be up $3,000 and maybe it costs you 1,000 to take it or 2,000 to take it. You're, you really have then 5,000 at risk, the money you have at risk plus the profit. So it's important to take it and book it, take it and book it. And that's why we gotta get the momentum, okay? But again, get back to what I was saying, you must have an edge to be successful. Mine is spotting momentum, playing the gap. And also I do focus on shorting. You may say, well, how are you shorting now when the market's been rallying and making new highs? Trust me, we've been doing it. Most of the trades that I showed at the examples were shorts. Sometimes I will go long. We actually went long yesterday too. We went long eBay. eBay was a gap up in earnings. I liked it. And so today and yesterday we actually went long. So I have nothing against going long and we do calls on the options newsletter but I do focus on shorting. But ironically, being able to spot pure weakness and seeing what's weak has helped me pick the best longs. Again, I talked about some of those today, but either way, you've still got to have a focus because there's too many people that are doing too many different things. People want to do Forex. People want to do options. People want to do Bitcoin. If you're, you're never going to get good at one thing, okay, if, unless you focus. People want to do futures. There's no magic bullet okay you have to learn something it's got to work and then you've got to get really good at it 
And that is what I've made a career out of doing, okay? Because I've been doing this, like I said, since 2008. So whatever you choose to do, if you don't ever hone it down, you're never really gonna get good at it to be able to get anywhere, to be able to risk, you know, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars in an options trade and a trade overnight. But the reason I do love to short, just to tell you though, and I prefer to short even though we went long today, is because shorting moves go fast. Moves to the downside go fast and quick. And again, shorting is profitable because of the fear and the panic that comes into a stock when it drops and falls. Nobody thinks about getting out of something when they're down. They'll get out like that, okay? So moves to the downside go much, much faster than moves to the upside. There's no sense of emergency to go long. Now, I will say this, though. Occasionally, you have something called panic buying. You might see that, actually, in the video. We really haven't seen that yet. You might see that in a stock like that, but it's very, very rare. You might see it in the market, actually, at some point this year. But usually, the fear and panic happens to the downside, to the downside. Any, any questions here? I'm just looking in the chat before I keep yes. going. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, David wants to know, and I always think this is interesting. Uh, I love this question. Do you use market or limit orders or something else? No, I do limit orders, but that's not a rule. That's not a stock switch rule. If you want to do market orders, you can. I found I get better fills with limit orders or faster fills, but you, that's not a rule. Do whatever works for you to get a good fill. All right. Uh, Christopher asked, um, uh, in your rating system of 26 points, can you give an example of what would earn one point? No, because that's what you're paying me for in the class. And also the class is 14 hours. <laughs> and Jeff is going to boot me out here in about 10 minutes. So we don't even have time. That catches, uh, I mean, that catches us up with the, with the questions. Okay. Uh, I'll add it back to you. And you know what? That wouldn't even help you. Whoever asked that point, you, because again, it's not one thing. Even if I told you something today for free, what good would that do you? Nothing. You've got a system is a system because you look at everything today. And I don't, I don't know what this is. It's kind of interesting to me. Traders are very black and white. That's why they love indicators. They live and die by indicator because they want to see a 20 period moving average and they want to say, that's it. We're going to go long on that. And it's all going to work. We're going to make all this money. Even if I gave you one thing today, it wouldn't help you. It would be meaningless to you because you wouldn't be able to make money on any one particular point of the 26 points. A system is a system because you look at everything together as a whole. You say this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. And then guess what? Even after that, if I ran a gap at 8 a.m., market isn't even open, didn't even do anything, not even in trade, not even doing anything yet, I wait for the open. I don't even take that trade until after the market opens and after it sets up. What if it doesn't set up? Guess what? I'm not doing it. There was something today, I'll tell, I don't even know what it's doing right now, HPQ. We looked at it. It pushed up. We looked at it to short. If I had done it, I would have lost. We didn't do it. So I could go through all the steps, but that's the preliminaries. Then I have to also get the setup. If I don't get the setup, I'm not doing it. So again, a system is designed to use everything together. If you're looking for one thing ever to make a decision for you, you're, you're looking for something that doesn't exist. And again, I know that's why people love this idea of indicators, whatever, Fibonacci's, all this stuff. You're just, you're kind of like looking for something that's totally unrealistic and doesn't exist. You've got to learn it all. You've got to make decisions based on all of the points together. And then you wait for the confirmation to get the setup after the market opens. And if you don't get it, then you don't trade. Well, that was a good question. Um, every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, preferably. Number two, big moves of the day. Number three, early confirmation of my bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. And number four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. And you need that. Because again, I'm not entering the stock in the pre-market. I'm not entering stocks in the post-market. What if it fails, okay? And sometimes something is affected by the overall market. I think HPQ, if you want my opinion, failed today because of the market, okay? Because the market was up today and then rally. This is initially, initially, again, I don't know what it's doing right now, but that's what happened in the morning. So we didn't do it. But anyway, so 26 point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. It's all, everything together. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move of the day with volatility to trade. And volatility is your friend because that's how you're gonna make money in the market and you need momentum. Having a checklist keeps you organized and this is imperative because so many traders are not organized. It helps you stay organized. It helps you stay focused. If you know you have ADD or something where your brain has a hard time focusing, 
or you're at work or you've got kids or the dog's barking, I mean, you, you really need something to help you. And that's the room is good for people for that. When I'm saying, boom, and I'm giving the number, it helps people. But the reality is you still have to help yourself get focused too. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock to make the correct decision. Having a checklist helps assist you with your directional bias. That's the only way you're going to make money. And having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. A checklist is a plan of action. Like if you were going to get surgery, you'd go through a checklist. I say, don't eat 12 hours before. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't drink anything. You go on a plane. There's a checklist. The pilot goes through everything. This checks out. This checks out. All the time, anything that you're taking seriously, you have to do it. And unfortunately, a lot of people trade the market and risk money. They don't take it seriously. I had a guy, it was a guy, I had a cable outage. I had an internet outage. He came here, nice guy, young guy, came here, you know, was like, oh my God, you know, and he was wanted to find out what I did and fixed up my internet. And then he texted me the other day some stock. It was a shit sock that he wanted to buy. And I said, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, it's like everybody just gets excited about the money that they could make. But I mean, if you're if you're, if you're investing in something that's crap, it, you're not gonna make any money. You're gonna lose. You really have to learn what to do in order to trade and be successful. And and it's just it's just like you can't just say, well, whatever. Everyone that puts money in the market should have a plan of action, a checklist. On a professional level, all high income career field specialists have checklists. You've got to take it seriously. And, and I just like I can't even stress that enough. And again, so many people throw money into the market and they just don't take it seriously. It's like, why? People take their IRA seriously, their retirement seriously, but they don't take their regular trading account seriously. That's, that's as important, if not more important, because you can make a lot of money. You're, you're limited with your IRA, your retirement account of what you can do with it. You have no limitations in your trading account. If you have a margin account set up at a broker, you can do whatever you want. Don't waste time trading without getting anywhere. It just makes no sense. And again, if you've been attempting to do this for a while and need a strategy, you can come and learn my strategy. I teach the class once a month. <coughs> again, it's all day on a Saturday, all day on a Sunday. You will learn the points. You'll learn the whole system. You'll learn all the entries. You'll learn targets, the exits. You'll learn chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And remember, when you pay for a class like mine, it's a gift to yourself. It's an investment in yourself. It's a quote from Warren Buffett. This is a good quote. There's one investment that supersedes all others. You invest in yourself. You want to get ahead in life, you're going to invest in yourself. You want to get ahead in your trading, same concept. Otherwise, you're fly by nighting it, 50 50 crap shoots, fast forward one year from now or the end of this year, and you're nowhere or you're worse off. And I hate to see that for people, especially in this type of environment, especially in an environment where cost and inflation is so high and interest rates are so high. You've got to think about what you're doing with your money. And not only that, you should think about what you're doing with your time. Love what you do because you're going to do it for hours and hours every day for a long, long time. I love trading. I love shorting. I love making money. Okay. I love when we win. I hate to lose. And I even love teaching. Now, again, it's something that I only do once a month, but I do love doing it. You know, but the nice thing about trading is I'm done quick and early in the day and I can go out and I can do whatever I want the rest of the day. Go shopping, go for a walk. I'm here today doing a webinar with you. It's, it's, it's a nice lifestyle if you can invest the time and money and energy into learning how to do it and to take it seriously. But you've got to get value out of your education. Again, if you want to come, you will learn the, the points from me. You'll learn the entries and the exits, and you can empower yourself today. But it's a whole system. It's not just one thing. It's all the pieces of the puzzle together. Like if you go, I bought my grandmother a puzzle at Central Park for Christmas. It was a little bit smaller pieces than I thought when I got it for her. She's working on it. She's got it about halfway done, she told me. It's, it's, a, it's a picture of Central Park ice skaters in the park at winter. You, you don't know what the puzzle looks like until you have the puzzle done. And that's the whole point. We're trying to predict that the stock's going to go here. That's the genius in the system. But you have to do it and learn it and go through the process. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. The March class is early because of the fact of Easter, March 16th, 17th. And then, of course, I know basketball. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. Combo includes the trends, which is $74.99. And I'm doing a leap year special. The leap year special is going on through Sunday, March 3rd. If you want to sign up, you can get the trading room free and the options newsletter free to the end of this year. And again, this is going on through Sunday. I don't know if anyone has any questions. I think I'm done on time. Any more questions?
Yeah, uh, I have a comment and a question. We'll okay. do them real quick. So Fred wants to know, oh wait, uh, Kumar says, with good risk and trade management and your brain, Melissa's gap option is very profitable. That's my current experience. So oh, thank you for that, I don't Kumar. know who said that, but thank you. Who said that? Kumar. Oh, Kumar, there he is. <laughs> Um, Fred says, the, is the 26-point checklist done manually on each stock that you're looking at? Yes. Yes, it is. Because, again, your best thing is your brain. Now, again, Jeff has scanners and this thing and that thing. If you want to try to put something in a scanner, you can. But i got to be honest with you, you are going to have to think through all the points anyways. The scanner helps you find a group of gaps. But as far as using your brain to go through it manually, you're doing it on the daily chart. And yeah, you got to go through each one consecutively. But I'm not rating 10,000 things every morning. Like I said, I'm going through and making a small watch list and then I'm pairing them out. And the better you get, the easier you get, the faster you get at doing it. It doesn't take you that long to go through and rate them. All right. Uh, I've put the uh, email address in the chat. Um, met, uh, also, uh, YouTube is going to put that in the, uh, in the chat as well. Uh, Melissa, thank you very much for thank coming you. and joining us and spending some time with us. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Thank you.